that one will jack you up, won't it? <laughs> it's all. It did me anyway. Uh, all right, so let's pray. Ooh, Lord God, you put a heavy scripture on us today. Shoo-wee. Lord, help us to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, <laughs> I, I, no, I didn't pick, this is part of the lectionary scripture for today, so it's <laughs> kind of ironic that it would fall on the Sunday of the Call General Conference in St. Louis. That, that Call General Conference for the United Methodist Church started yesterday. It was a day of prayer and, and what have you, and just kind of getting ready for today. Okay, so what happens today is um, they, they, they elect a, I think a president and a secretary or something like that and, and they start voting on prioritizing the petitions there's a bunch of petitions 50 ish or something you know to do with how the church is going to go forward and deal with this issue of human sexuality okay among other things that's the major you know hot button issue right now so that's where they're at today tomorrow they they will take the the, the top ones that from the election today and they will vote on them one by one okay so so here we go so this i, I don't know how it's going to all turn out right and then tuesday is just kind of a cleanup day for if there needs to be some some additional things voted on if something's not constitutional which i know uh, now this may you may be thinking who cares, right? Well, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty serious business to a lot, a lot of us uh, preacher types and all. Anyway, um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not here to push my issue, my agenda. Okay, I'm gonna try not to do that today. Y'all know where I'm at. I think y'all know. I mean, I went to a seminary that's motto is the whole Bible for the whole world. So I mean, it's. I've kind of been grounded in that. So, I mean, no apologies. It's just where I am. So, um, okay. So, so, so y'all have been, those of y'all that's been in the United Methodist Church for, for a while and have probably seen stuff on, on newspapers, websites, maybe on TV. I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of buildup over the years and a lot of hoorah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, on two sides of the issue, guess what? Not so different than our culture. Right? It's the same, really, and this I was going to say, I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, what we're seeing in the United Methodist Church is kind of a microcosm of what's going on in, in, our, in the Western, in Western culture at large. It's, uh, you know, um, how are we going to deal with all of this? stuff and 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 uh you know for those of us that want to stay you know as close as we can to to you know biblical living and all that how do we reconcile that <coughs> and and still love other people right and love other people the way you know jesus is talking about here so it's all right okay frustration boils over huh <laughs> Now, th this may speak to some of my, it speaks to me, y'all. I mean, my frustration at times has boiled over, over, I, I'm going to be honest with you, over this issue. You know, there have been times I have gotten on a soapbox about it, and I've you know, ranted and raved and stuff. And, and, you know, then I think about people I, that I know, that I love, that, that are dealing with this issue personally. Kind of makes me switch that switch that off, you know that for, you know because we all I dare say right uh, we all know somebody in our life that, that that has dealt with this issue right we love them right and we we're supposed to love them <laughs> did y'all read that scripture right so there is a tension you know. A, a, on how to love them and, and really support them and care about them, yet, you know, maybe not condone. I, 
So I, I struggle with that. I, I, I give that to you today. I struggle with that. Your, your church, your, your denomination has struggled with that for 40 years. Okay. Um, but uh, there's going to be some frustration up there. I'm going to give you a heads up. <laughs> there's going to be some, probably be some demonstrations uh, by one side or the other. Uh, there may even be an attempt to shut the whole conference down. Okay, I would not be surprised at all about that. Um, hopefully there's a contingency plan to deal with something like that if it happens. I don't know. I asked the bishop down here in Lufkin, I was like, so what happens, you know, if, hmm, you know, there's, a, there's demonstrations that spill over into the, you know, the, the auditorium and they, you know, and he's like, I really don't know. We're going to talk about it, you know, before the conference starts and, and hopefully have some kind of plan. No, he made no commitment about it. But let me, okay, I was going to tell you all this. And I don't know if y'all saw this article. There was a man in a, where was that town in New York? Haverstraw, New York. Y'all probably may have read about it. A uh, guy in a, walked into a 7-Eleven up there, and there's a family of eight, you know, mom and dad, 32-year-old parents with six kids, right, from a 10 months old to 10, 11 years old. And he's smoking, a, this guy's smoking a cigarette that comes in, and they said, hey, you know, would you please not smoke around my kids, you know? I mean, he blew up, right, goes out and gets in his car, drives into the store, rams into that family, backs up 20 feet, and comes at them again. And, and, and the mom is trying to save her kids, and she ends up losing her life. Okay. That's what is happening. We hear about it all over in, in this country right now. People are just losing it and, and, and falling prey to their anger and just choosing violence. We hear about it every day, right? I mean, somebody's going into some place of business where they're fired or whatever and they're shooting up the place. I mean, it's crazy. I, I think Jesus is trying to tell us, don't do that. Be a, a voice of reason and calm and, and love and mercy and peace. Whatever happens, you know, it, it's not worth all that. I mean, that, you know, I mean, those kind of situations, we know they're just horrible. Um, but it seems like sometimes that we're, we're living in a culture that is divided, right, don't we? It's almost like you could almost split it down the middle anymore. And it's easy, and I think due to politics, we have demonized the other side. Okay. If you're conservative, we've demonized the progressives or the liberals. If you're liberal, we've demonized the conservatives. They're, you know, they're all bigots and homophobes and xenophobes and you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so, okay. So can we, I just wanted to, to acknowledge that we've got a lot of frustration in our in our culture right now and certainly within the United Methodist Church because we're kind of a you know microcosm of what's going on. So this picture of Jesus on the cross and I know we don't want to see it but remember that that he was what happened to him? You know, he was hated. He was spit on. He was cursed. He was beaten. I mean, beaten nearly to death. Uh, if you've ever seen The Passion of the Christ, you know, you get an idea of, of what happened to him. It was severe. Uh, and, and many didn't survive even that, that beating with the cat of nine tails and all. That killed 
quite a few by the Roman, the hands of the Romans. And 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 he was, you know, nailed to a cross and hoisted up there. And and we always see him with this kind of loin cloth thing on. He was probably naked, completely buff naked, up there, exposed to the world, y'all, as far as to be humiliated. What did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, let those words ring in our ears today uh, as, as we contemplate and pray for our denomination. Uh, serious, serious business it is. I get that. But we've got to we've got to exercise some restraint, some love, some mercy and grace. I, I mean, I, I know what I think. I mean, I'm pretty. Nobody's going to change me and the way I feel, right? But uh, and, and yeah, it's hard for me to relate sometimes with. Some of that, but you know what? I, at the same time, I know that I don't have all the answers. Let me let me tell you this: um, when God, I'm a divorced person. Okay, my first marriage, yeah, ended. You know, and then it was well, it was. Uh, she was in an affair, you know, and didn't repent and all that. So, I mean, it was it was due to adultery, plain and simple. So, um, maybe that justified it. I don't know. But then a number of years later, um, five, six years later, seven years later, I felt like God was calling me into the ministry and, and, you know, I don't fit Paul's definition of an elder, right? If you take the strict definition of it, it's like husband of, you know, husband of one, or wife, husband of one wife, right? I mean, if you take that literally, it means, you know, you ain't, yes, you got one, you've got one wife. You haven't been divorced and all that sort of thing. So I struggled with that. Y'all understand? Um, and, and, and that was a tripping point for me for a while. And, and I, had to, I had to go, you know, continuously go to the Lord and say, okay, are you sure about this? You know I'm divorced, right? You know I don't technically fit the guidelines. But what I, what I felt like he was saying to me was, you're forgiven for that divorce. It's in the past. You're not getting divorced every day. You're, it's done. I've forgiven you. It's washed away as if it never happened. And, and so, now that, you know, does that justify it for everybody? I can't say, right? I mean, I, I just know that that's the way I felt. And I believe that there may be persons who, who are maybe homosexual that feel the same way. I can't say. I don't know. But they, they I don't understand that. Okay. I can't understand that. I, I don't condone that. But there are people that uh, that are, you know, they're, they're, they're saying they were called. I don't know. I can't. Okay. So here's. All right, here's the good news. <laughs> God's still on the throne. It really doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. What really matters is what God thinks. And God's the only one that can speak for God. Right? <laughs> you know, so, so, yes, he has spoken in his word, and I, I trust that. So, 
but we have to we have to use compassion in that too. So uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a controversy back in the early part of the fourth century. Okay, and that's why I had y'all do the Nicene Creed a while ago. Emperor Constantine, who's uh, you know Christianity back in the first couple of hundred years after Jesus was uh, was persecuted severely. I mean, they they their Christians were you know lit on lamp poles in Rome, you know, to light the streets, and they were they were sacrificed in the the uh, the Colosseum, you know, to the to wild animals and stuff. Uh, it was horrific what happened to Christians. Uh, they were persecuted beyond imagination. And then all of a sudden, Constantine <laughs> says, I, you know, I, I'm a Christian. And bam, you know, it, almost overnight, it became cool to be a Christian. Uh, so he ended up, there was a controversy, an early, a controversy in the early church about uh, was Jesus, did Jesus come from God and the Holy Spirit come from God the Father and just 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 come out of him and were begotten or were they created or was you know Jesus created was did he have a beginning point right uh, did God create him uh, there was a guy named Arius that uh, that took the point that Jesus was created right and and at Athanasius Athanasius, I think is his name, uh, took the point that no, uh, you know, Jesus was, you know, just came forth out of God. He was there with God in the beginning and, and, and the Holy Spirit. They, so they, you know, they were begotten, not made, right? Was the, so they had, not, Constantine said, all right, all you church leaders, you bishops, you, y'all get together. He called it the, Nice, uh, the Council of Nicaea in 325. AD, and they met in this little town, all these church leaders, and, and they voted, and there was only two people that took Arius's, uh, that Jesus had been created, took his stand. All the rest of them, several hundred, uh, went with Athanasius and proclaimed, and that's where this creed comes from, the Nicene Creed. Um, it's been around since 325. A long time. Right? Um, and, and just just so you know, Athanasius would be, he would be exiled five different times because of his faith in Christ and the stands he took. He, he was a bishop for 47 years, but 17 of those he spent in, in exile. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, everything was a, kind of in an uproar back then. So, um, understand too that the Methodist Church started as a, a as a reform movement within the Anglican Church. That's where it started. John Wesley was trying to because you know basically the Anglican Church was dead, you know, and it was just spiritually dead. And Wesley was trying to whip them into a frenzy, and they didn't want to have any part of it. And eventually, decades into it, Wesley finally said, okay, I, I give up. You know, we're going to be our own denomination. And he started ordaining. Now, he wasn't a bishop, but he started ordaining, ordained Thomas Koch and Francis Asbury to come to America so that they could ordain preachers over here for the ministry in the U.S. of A. So, so you know what? God's still on the throne. I don't know what's going to come out of this. There may be a church split about to happen. Don't be surprised if it does. I don't know. What I would say to y'all is can we, can we be loving and compassionate and kind regardless of what happens? right we don't have to get angry and, and say vile things to people we don't have to be hurtful to people 
whatever happens, this church is going to embrace whoever comes in that door. Right? I mean, we're going to embrace them. We're going to love on them. Right? I mean, we are. Because that's what God would have us to do. Doesn't mean we have to do the weddings. Doesn't mean we have to have, the, have them in the clergy. That's my, that's my stopping point for me personally. But, you know, I don't know where this is going. So, so anyway, anybody else got anything to say? I, I open it up to anybody. So, any questions? Any? I read Jeff McDonald's letter to the First Methodist. Okay. And he said, this church will still be here doing the things that we do. And he enumerated all of the things that they would do. And we'll still be here doing this, irregardless of what happens. Well, you know, nobody here last night was, was I never heard anybody say anything about this stuff, you know, today or whatever. It, it's, it's a, you know, by and large, it's a non-issue. It is and it ain't, you know, kind of thing. So, so we may have to, we may at some point have to take a vote. I don't know. But uh, whatever the case. Well, you don't ask for trouble from tomorrow. Yeah, you we don't ask. one step at a time. Amen. So, so we're just gonna love whoever comes in the door, right? I mean, y'all, y'all did a phenomenal job of that yesterday. I would, I mean, again, I mean, I can't say enough good about. That's, that's the picture of the church. Now, were there, you know, were there people here that, that may have been adulterers or alcoholics or, I mean, you fill in the blank, sinners of some sort or another, maybe, maybe. Well, we all are. Yeah. So, all so they were, we're all here. You know, what was that um, John um, Osteen used to say? said somebody told him one time i don't want to go to church and sit there with all them hypocrites and john said he said well come on it'll just be one more right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know jesus is our hope y'all i mean if we lose sight of that picture you know we've lost it all if we get to focus it on and, and I guess that's what gives me a little heartburn is I wish we'd quit focusing on this issue so we could be more focused on yes. ministry. Yes. So I don't know. Maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Um, so y'all may be having to preach to me next week after this all ends up. Y'all might be having to say, all right, calm down, preacher. Because <laughs> it, it is a hot button issue for me too. Okay. I walk, you know. I, I, I've been here about 70 years. The church has never had an issue with that. But I've been engaged in this church for an hour. And there's never has been an issue. And I don't think it's really going to be, really. I mean, if it wasn't for the, you know, know the, name, the denominational stuff, we wouldn't even know. It. it wouldn't even be a problem. So y'all, I, I, I kind of wanted y'all to take the lid, I mean, open the can of worms a little bit today and just let y'all know there's something going on in St. Louis and you're going to hear about it this next week and I don't know how it's going to go, but please let's don't overreact one way or the other. Let's pray for everybody, uh, you know. God's still in control, right? and I'm counting on that. Anybody else got anything? Amen. All right. Amen. Okay. Well, it was a little different today, but probably should be under the circumstances, I think. You know, would you, I don't want y'all to be in the dark and, and just read something in the newspaper next Tuesday, Wednesday, and say, why did we know about that? Okay, so you know about it at least, and uh, we'll see, you know, uh, we'll see what happens from here. But 
just pray for now. So let's pray. Let's close by praying uh, for our denomination. Holy God, we, we are frail. We are sinners. We are saved by your grace and nothing else. Not because we're holy and good, but because you are. And you loved us enough to, to pay the price for our sins on the cross. Uh, Lord, help our denomination to, to come to terms with this uh, issue of, of human sexuality. Let it be done, Lord, so, so we can move forward. We just pray for peace. We pray for, for everyone, every church, to be able to go forward and to, and to proclaim the good news about your son. Let it all be done to your glory as you lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right, so we're going to...